When we were in school, we had guidance counselors who helped us think about what we wanted to do after our education was complete. That career guidance was a great way to learn about what kind of careers were out there and how to gain access to job opportunities. After we graduate, however, most of us are on our own to think about our careers. How do we adapt to the ever-changing labor market? How do we stay relevant when the work changes? Do we need new skills? How do I know? There are a few guidance counselors for those of us already in the world of work, but that doesn't mean we don't have resources. We can find the guidance we need independently. Regardless of whether we have been working for a few years or for decades, we know that we need to always be on top of our game if we want to stay employed and compete for great jobs. The key to staying employed and thriving in today's labor market requires us to stay relevant. That is, to have the skills and experience that are in high demand. It takes knowing what the demand is and how we can fill the needs the labor market is looking for. How? Let's take a look. Research the labor market. Find out what is happening in your line of work and what skills are in high demand. Check online. You can do this at home or at your local library by searching for keywords such as skills in demand or upcoming careers in demand. Expand your horizons. Think beyond what you are doing. Then begin to narrow your research into industries or professions that intrigue you. If you like data and want to dive into this research, you can even explore the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics to see what actual kinds of jobs are out there, where the most new jobs are projected to be in high demand, and the median pay. Whatever career path you choose to research, you are beginning the career exploration journey. Knowing the landscape is the first step. Have fun. So you've done your homework and maybe found it pretty daunting. The voice inside your head might be saying, I don't have these credentials. I don't have these skills. Don't let that voice stop you. You have only done a scan to inform your career choices. It's a scan to see what the world of work will look like in the not too distant future. You have looked into a crystal ball and identified trends. It's what you do next with this information that can make all the difference in managing your career. Let's hear from Tom who used this kind of information and what he did with it. Yeah, I, I sat my parents down. I said, uh, I really like flying. Um, you know, I'm gonna leave my corporate job and, and go pursue a career. I always wanted to fly ever since I was a kid. I had all the flight simulator games and all, all the computers I had at home. Um, so I, I always wanted to do it. So I, so I did it. And I left that career and started learning how to fly. Most pilots enter to, entering a career start off as flight instructors. That's how we get our initial initial experience. Um, so it's a you know, it's a real one on one, you know, uh, interaction with flight students. You know, working in a very small airplane. Um, where you're, you know, teaching somebody how to fly. You know, being being friendly, direct, you know, a good educator, um, but also being compassionate for somebody who might be struggling through certain parts of, of learning how to fly is you know, of really important skills. Uh, and then I was hired at the, my first regional airline. Uh, flew, flew a pretty small plane that would terrify most people and then got into a bigger plane flying out of Newark Airport that was uh, 70, 70 passengers in the back. Uh, it was a lot of time on the road. It was, it was a lot of hard work, but it was a lot of fun. So my transition from from flying into into insurance is, is somewhat funny. You, you never know who you're going to meet or when you're going to meet them. So when I was teaching people how to fly as a flight instructor, I actually taught our former global head of claims for, for AXA XL how to fly an airplane. He was a good pilot, to be honest. Flash forward from then till when uh, XL Group at the time was starting their aviation business. They needed someone with a strong aviation technical background. Paul reached out to me. I interviewed, I told him I know nothing about insurance. He said, you're perfect. And uh, next thing I know, I got hired. So aerospace claims is, is, is a lot like the claims for an auto industry, right? So we insure airplanes and we insure the people that ride in and, in and around, you know, in and around airplane. So, so how do I manage my career? Um, I think I'm always looking ahead, you know, and that's, I mean, obviously you live in the present, but you should always be planning for the future, right? So, you know, in, in, back in my earlier in my career, I identified a law school and, and the legal system as being something that was missing. So I went to law school. You know, now I'd say that you know having a strong background in data and analytics uh, is, is really, really key to growth. You know, so, so I'm filling that gap in, and I think the the one thing I would pass on is is fill the gaps in your career and your in your in your background before you need to. You know, so I think I've always been perspective in in looking at like my career and looking at 
you know, not only where I am today, but then setting a long-term goal as to where I want to go and then what steps are going to need to get there. This story provides a lot to learn from and a reminder that your career journey is unique to you. Know yourself. Know what you like to do. People who follow their interests likely perform well and excel in their careers. You have unique interests and aspirations, unique combinations of skills and experiences. Keeping yourself relevant means continuing to develop high demand skills. Not just technical, but high demand softer skills such as teamwork, collaboration, and communication skills. They are always marketable and transferable. Let's summarize. As adults already in a career, we have to be ever vigilant in knowing what is happening in our industry and types of jobs that are in demand. Doing our homework is important. Staying isolated and unaware is risky at best. There are lots of resources online. You can access them from home if you have a computer or at the library. In addition to knowing what is in demand, the path for managing your unique career is knowing what work you like to do, what you aspire to be, knowing what kind of work interests you and what you are good at, your strengths or superpowers, we all have them, as well as what skills you may need to build for the long term to keep yourself relevant and employable. Keep your network working. Seek out those people in your network who can give you insights into the skills you may need or jobs that are hot today. Be curious. The next step is to take action. Consider what you can do to keep your competitive edge. What skills or experiences should you acquire to achieve your aspirations? Focus on what interests you. It will be easier to flex to a path that works for you. What resources do you need? Tap your network to find out what it takes to keep your unique career on track. Do it. Small steps add up. Don't wait to manage your career until you have to. Careers are an ever-present part of you. Keep yourself sharp, relevant, and flexible.